Hey guys, it's Dave with Crow's Nest Hobbies. And today we're going to show you how we went from this silver primed knight for Adeptus Titanicus to this one. From a primed state all the way to based. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we're going to start on this and we're going to do the silicone gray to paint the areas in here. The joints and the frame and things like that that you don't want your or that you're wanting to be like a metallic the basilicum gray over the silver rust-oleum metallic uh, works really well it lets you get that metal look kind of oily and the the basilicum gray has kind of a brownish tint to it brown black gray color and I found it works really well for this type of thing and we get all these joints in here and I'm using an older brush because it's trying to get in these little parts I'd bend it around and stuff and don't want to tear up a good detail brush like trying to get up in these areas you can mess up your good brushes easily This silver that I used is Rust-Oleum Metallic Brilliant Metal Finish, and I've been I've used it on some other Titans that I did, and it came out really nice. And sorry about some of the camera stuff. I'm still figuring this stuff out. And don't if you're not if you're going to put a different color contrast over it try to keep it clean from the current contrast like the stacks up here we're going to do those a different color i found that the uh, snake bite leather does real good over a silver to give it kind of a, a goldy bronze color that looks real good for like the exhaust stacks and things like that a little bit of a rusty finish all right and we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back and move on to the next part always make sure you let your contrast dry before you move on unless you're wanting to mix them like uh, I've mixed some of the reds and blues together to get some cool colors but you got to be careful with those I have the green colors and we're gonna use contrast Creed green bring it focus there and it does a real good job of getting you the, the deep color but keeping the metallics look to it and I, I like it I've been playing with the, the different colors of contrast getting a few at a time and trying them uh, I use this actually the, the Creed green on my Warlord Titan for Adeptus Titanicus also and you just get it in there and let it creep into the low areas and I did actually did the full battle force minus the the knights it, from opening the box to painted and ready for the table in four days and it was n probably 80% done with contrasts so it makes it real easy to get a a new army on the tabletop and painted. I 
and sometimes you'll want to, sorry about that, I moved off camera, sorry, sometimes you'll want to be a little bit neater with the colors, because it'll affect other contrast going over it, but for the most part, if you're just using the contrast for your, your big areas like this, it can go on a little sloppier. And try once you keep moving out camera. Keep moving the, the contrast around if, until you get them kind of where you're wanting them. Because once they dry, it's not as easy to, to fix as with regular acrylics. You can't just go over it and fix it quite as easy. And the, the more coats you put on of a color, the darker it'll get. I've done uh, some of the reds and blues. And I really like this green one. My whole Titan Force is done after named after uh, Celtic deity, so the green kind of fit it well. Clean that area up there. Wouldn't let me get those two. But that'll cover all right. And we'll go back over these areas again. They're already starting to dry. So you can add another coat and move it around. See, it's getting that really emeraldy look to it. And if you're wanting it to be certain, once you get to that certain kind of color that you're wanting to keep it kind of thin, like you don't want it to pull up so much back here, and just kind of pick those up a little bit and move them to other areas on the model. I have found that working with a, sorry, a very bright metallic gives you a better effect with them, giving them a metallic effect than working with some of the duller ones. I've tried a couple of different ones. I tried brushing on uh, lead belcher and iron uh, iron breaker. Yeah, iron breaker and it just doesn't get the good effect it's a little they're a little too dark but the uh, rustoleum spray paint does really well and by no means my stuff is not going to be the best painted but I paint for tabletop. And if it's not dark enough, you can always go back later and add more. But it's easier to add more than it is to fix if you add too much. So I'll leave that one how it is and we'll wait for it to dry and move on to the next one. Okay guys, now we're gonna do the trim. And for the trim I'm using the Vallejo model color brass and to thin it I use the Vallejo thinner medium. I actually use this medium for any of my paints. It's it's really good. You don't need a whole lot. It doesn't thin it so much that you have to put a bunch of layers but it gives you good coverage. So I'm using the Citadel small layer brush for this.
I'm using these thinner mediums over water that you don't have to thin it as much and it still levels out and you don't get lots of brush strokes on it. You can see the the contrast is still a little damp in areas where it's deeper, but you can carefully get in there and get those areas, and that'll clean up a little bit once it dries. Sorry if I move off camera a little bit, so it's still trying to get used to the camera. If I was painting the the warlord that I did, it was kind of the same style. I did it in the silver instead of the the brass. I would have been able to get all the little bitty rivets and stuff. But painting for the tabletop, that's not visible really at this this size of a model. So. A little bitty, like I got a little outside of that foot at least there. So it's, but again, at this this size, it's not going to show us like it would on the the full size knight.
See, there was a little bit of that contrast that had slowed between the two plates. And I just painted over and it picked up as I was going. And I just wiped that off. And it works well. The contrasts are really forgiving, but they can be unforgiving at the same time. So. But I'll go through and kind of sh I've showed you how I've done this trim. So I'll finish this up and I'll come back. Okay, guys, we're back. And I'm going to be doing the the chain sword here and any of the black area that I'm wanting to do. So I use the Vallejo black. And some of the thinner medium. Make sure you shake that up because it does settle. And when you're using the, the thinner mediums, it can make it look like it's a change in the color. But once it's dry, it doesn't affect it at all. You can see it looks a little kind of German gray looking but it is a black when it comes out dry. So I'm going to paint the areas of the chain sword here. Stuff I didn't paint with the contrast. Just camera. better just trying to keep me on the screen a little more. blocking as much. And again, this is my first video, so I'm, as I'm going through, I'm watching as I work and finding areas to, to improve. Uh, bear with me a little while, and hopefully I'll get better. Going ahead and painting these hoses that are on here because I'm going to come back and do them in lead belcher later. So, not a big deal. So, off of this area here, I did that. Kind of just throws a different little detail to it. In each one of these, I do it same basic style, but I throw a little bit of individuality into them. Like the other one I did for the that I showed in the opening was all black on the chain sword. This one I did it with the green, and then done the black on the details. That keeps the same theme to them, but gives them each their little individual characters. Yeah. I see I missed a bit of 
gold in here. And the gold will need another coat on it before it's all done, but see it's good. I also do under the edge here to match the trim. Just makes it look a little cleaner. If you, not that anybody really sees underneath it, but I have to fix that. And the little hoses on the the helmet here. I'll do those with lead belcher also. black and I'm going to go over the, the barrel area with the snake bite along with this area back here I'll do a snake bite and it'll It'll give it a really cool color. I'm also going to do the chain on the chain sword and the stubber. So. We'll let that dry and come back. So I'm going to be doing the bits with the snake bite. And I'll show you the color I get from that. You can see. Already see that it's it's got a really good effect to it. The, uh, the snake bite is almost a gold when it's on the thin spots, but it's those brown recesses really kind of make it stand out a little bit. I have noticed something with the contrast. When I put it on a smoother, more of a gloss surface, it does kind of try to beat up a little bit. But that is, I think, because it's such a smooth surface and it's not a true primer. It is a just a metallic paint that I'm using. But it's not anything. I just a little more 
time putting an extra coat on it or moving the colors around. And then I'll do black on these so I miss those. See on the the wider area, sorry about that. On the wider areas, you want to kind of smooth it because it'll kind of pull up on you. Kind of like working with a wash that you don't spread out. And I'll let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, we're going to do a little bits of detail on the chain sword here. So. Piping there. And this is done with the lead belcher. There's a few pieces on the the gun that I'll get just to give it a little bit of detail to it. And I think that's all what I'm gonna do on that one with the the lead belcher. A little more up here. I'll do a bit of a wash over it. And I'm using the Vallejo dark gray wash and do it with water. The lower 50%. And for this, do not use the the thinner because it will it will make the washes kind of washed out and dirty looking but kind of just put this along the edges where the gold get to catch any of the detail you don't have to worry about it on the oh you forgot the lead belcher on there The areas where the, the contrast works is they already kind of done themselves. The, the lead vulture will put some on there just to kind of catch some of that. Touched up. Get this little bit of the lead belchers that we missed. And then we'll come back in a minute and I'll show you how I did the the base. So for the base, I use the Vallejo uh, earth textures. I really like them because they're easy to use. They come in a lot of different 
types. There's this is another one I like the European mud, and it's good for doing dioramas and if you're doing a tank, doing the tracks of it, stuff like that. It just goes on real well, and you get a lot of it in the, these tubs, and it's easy to use. I've got the little Citadel spatula text, uh, basing tool, and then I've also got some bigger spatulas for sculpting that I like to use. And they help you if you're doing a larger area. But for like doing bases, this is a really good one. This size spatula. And you can get this in, there's the Thomas version of this, which is just like a, a gray. And you can use that one and then paint whatever color you want over it. I use the the desert sand version a lot for my uh, bolt action marines. I did all of them in desert sand with this. And then I'll just kind of scrape it and level it and it works really well. Uh, you may have to do a second layer of this just to give a little better detail because when it dries it'll it'll thin out. And you won't have as deep of the the pumice, but it's it's really easy to do. Uh, I've got another one here that I did earlier, so I can show you the did some dry brushing. So I used the drawstone dry brush, and I get cheap makeup brushes from the Target and Walmart and stuff because they send, team, seem to work just as well as a, the dry brushers made for dry brushing. And they're a dollar, so. So if I mess one up, get it, you know, once it gets worn out, I just throw it away or grab a new one. And you can see they doesn't take much to get the details coming out on these this asphalt. But I just kind of do a heavy dry brush with this gray, and it it really shows that, that detail well. And then after this, it will just be gluing them on there, and he'll be done. Depending on if you have some real small tufts, you may glue that onto there also just to give him a little more depth on that base. But, you know, it, here's the other one I did earlier. And you can see they, they come out nice. The other one I did, there's a few subtle differences like the feet I did with the green also. Uh, the chain sword, of course, is all one color. But it doesn't take much to get these little knights ready for the table and ready to go. So that'll be it for the day. Thanks guys.